Hi friends, my name is Shivam. Welcome back to my channel. So based on the feedback I got, I am starting a series wherein I will be covering questions specific to each data structure and basically I will be covering questions of all difficulty levels from easy to medium to hard to very hard. So basically that will, uh, this to all the beginners, they, that will give a good uh, head start and for all the people who are very good at it, they, they will be able to uh, revise their concepts and maybe uh, learn new things because uh, there's always a new thing to learn. So basically I'll be starting with strings and arrays and the question I'm going to discuss today is basically you are given a string, you need to find if the string contains unique characters. And also you cannot use any additional data structure or any additional space. So uh, let's take example of a string. So basically uh, I'm I, I, I given a question is, I'm given a string is I love coding. So this is uh, the string, input string and I need to find and uh, if it if this string contain unique characters or not so basically i need to return true if uh, if this string contain only unique characters that is there is no duplicate character and return false if there is any duplicate character so as you can see that uh, this string does contain duplicate characters so basically o is uh, o is repeating and then we have uh, uh, i as also repeating so uh, this this uh, string contains duplicate characters so basically we need to return false in this case so how would you approach this question so naive way of uh, approaching this qu uh, question is basically you can convert this string into character array and then what you can do is basically uh, iterate over the character array so basically for every element for every element in the character array you need to iterate over all the remaining elements so basically i will be first for this for this i i will go through all the elements in uh, on the remaining uh, uh, character array and match if there is any other i or not so for for each element i do iterate over the right elements and see if there is uh, that element present in the array again or not and if at any time I find that the, my current element is present again, that means there are duplicate elements. So I return false. So this is how I can approach this problem in a naive way. Like, uh, okay, so now if I need to improve my solution, so basically I need to go to a linear solution. So this solution was like n square because I am iterating, uh, I am doing for every element I am iterating all the remaining elements. So it would be n square. So now if I need, want to solve this question in o n time, like that is linear time, how can I solve it? So basically what you can do is basically you can take a hash map and while iterating the string you can uh, you can uh, put the free, uh, element and its frequency in the hash map and um, at the end you can just check you can iterate over the hash map to check that if the hash map contains all the frequencies one or not so basically let's see let so what we can do is so we have a hash map wherein the, my key is the character and the value is the count of occurrence so i'll be at one i i'll come put the occurrence of 1 because it's present first time then I put L 1 0 so 0 is also first time 1 V also 1 E also 1 so all these characters are coming for the first time so I am putting the occurrence as 1 now I am at C so C is also not yet so it will count as 1 now O O basically before inserting I check O is present or not so O is present so what I will do is basically I will increment it increment the count from 1 to 2 and, and at this point also what I can do is at this point I can say that since I am getting a repeated element so I will return false so I don't even need to iterate the hash map again I can just uh, say at this point that my array my string contains repeated elements so uh, this is a good way of solving and it requires uh, basically extra space which is the hash map which wherein we are studying the keys and the count of occurrence so is there a better way to solve it like if can you solve it in uh, even uh, even less space so basically do you need do you really need this uh, size the count of occurrences of each character like think of a way what uh, can we use hash set in this case so uh, yes we can use hash set and how you, you can use the hash set basically i can iterate over the string and basically put each character in the hash set and we know the property of hash set so basically hash set can not contain any duplicate elements so basically uh, my hash set will only contain unique elements so how i can use this property so basically what i can do is after iterating uh, uh, over the character array i when i when i have inserted all the characters in the hash set what can what i can do is i can find the size of hash set and i can find the size of string and if both of these matches that means my string does not have any duplicate characters so why this is so because when i am inserting this uh, these characters in the hash set what is what what is happening is so basically this is my hash set so when i insert i it inserts l o v e and then I again come C then again O so basically when O it tries to insert O it checks for every insertion it checks if the element is present is not so this is the unique property of hash set that only 
unique elements can be in the headset. So when I try to insert O again, it checks that it O is already present. So it does not insert it again. So uh, it it leaves it as it is. So O will not be inserted again. Then D, then I. So I is also present uh, here. So it will not insert I again. And then N and N and G. So now my size of headset will be two less than the size of string. So uh, since the size is different, which means there was one or more duplicate elements. If interviewer asks you like uh, how many unique characters are there in the string, then you can easily also tell using the size of headset. So uh, using the he headset, basically we have reduced the size which was being taken by hash map and we could even solve a extension to this question wherein the interviewer can ask us how many unique characters are in the string. So the size of the headset will give us the unique characters in the hash uh, string. So I hope this is clear to you and this questions uh, very well takes care of like the hash map, hash set and string. So you know now when to use hash map, we went to use hash set. So let's move ahead and try to solve this question without using any additional data structure. So since we know that our string can contain characters ranging from A to Z, that is 26 unique characters. So we need to, we need a way uh, using which we can uh, basically find uh, if our string contain unique characters or not without using any additional data structure. So uh, we know that integer contains 32 bits. So uh, we can use these 32 bits to check that if our string contains uh, unique characters or not. So basically what we will be doing is we will be uh, using this the bits in the integer to uh, mark the presence of any character in the string. So I have written this function uh, check if string contain unique characters wherein I am taking the uh, input string and basically out, uh, I am returning the boolean based on if my string contains unique characters or not. So this is the input uh, this is the variable integer variable I, am I was talking about using uh, which uh, we will be checking if our string contains uh, unique characters or not. So what I am doing is I am iterating over the string and then basically uh, I am basically uh, converting the my character to integer and how I am doing that so basically uh, when I when I do the integer dot caret i so uh, for the first index that is i ith index so it will be giving me the value of sk uh, in a i but that will exceed 32 because uh, uh, my my small a starts from 97. So that's why I am what I am doing is basically I am subtracting it from uh, small a that is I am subtracting it from 97. So my a will become 0 and b will become 1 and c will become 2 and likewise my uh, z will become 25. So, the, uh, so it will come in my range and, uh, and, that, uh, and I will be able to uh, use the bits of integer. So next what I am doing is basically I am checking if, the, if my string already has that uh, character or not and how I am doing that basically. So since I have that integer representation of that character, so basically this integer, so this bit, this bit uh, in my integer represents that uh, if the that character is present or not. So basically zeroth bit in the in my integer will represent if my zeroth bit in the integer is set to zero, that means a is not present in my string, and if it's set to one, that means uh, a is present in my string. So uh, what I am doing is basically I am uh, uh, I am generating an integer and and basically setting that the the bit the nth bit the basically uh, that character bit to one so basically what is n here so basically n is my the rep uh, representation of uh, that character in integer form so for example if my in, uh, string has a in it so what i am doing is finding the value of a so a value of a will be zero so what uh, what i will be doing is so uh, uh, i will generate an integer so basically what i am doing is zero so i will be shifting one by zero so basically uh, my uh, binary string of a uh, uh, this number will be uh, one uh, and basically I'll be doing a end of it so what what does this essentially means is so my integer so if my integer already has the zero present bit as one then that in that case I will be doing one and one so one and one will be uh, so doing and may basically means that on both the bits should be one so if both the bits bits are one then only the uh, basically my this if condition will be true because I am checking if greater than zero. So if it is greater than zero, that means that uh, it is the that bit is already present in my uh, string because uh, that bit was already set for my integer. But and if that bit is not set for the integer, I'll move ahead and basically set that bit in the integer. And how I am setting that bit? So basically I am doing the same thing. So I am moving the uh, left shifting one by that that number of bits and basically doing a or. So what is or? So essentially or is like uh, any of the two. So basically uh, if uh, 0 and 1 is or of 0 and 1 is 1 so basically uh, in that integer the that num uh, nth, nth bit, bit, bit will be set and next time if that uh, character com comes again then uh, the bit is already set in the integer and it will break on this condition 
so that condition will become true so that's how we are uh, basically uh, writing the code so now i will dry run and basically uh, show you the value of each uh, each variable in my program to uh, so that you explain it understand it so let's run this program for input i love coding So basically initially my uh, the var integer variable is zero so i'll move ahead and then i am at the first character so basically what what would be my value of cat to int here so since my integer dot uh, caret i is i so uh, what is the uh, value of that so uh, moving ahead so what is my cat to int it is eight because uh, i is, is at the eight position so zero is one so a is zero b is one c is two d is three e is four and likewise i will be eight so now what I am doing is so I am checking if uh, i is already present in the my string or not. So how can I do that? So basically as I mentioned that uh, this what is this? So basically I am shifting uh, one by eight. So uh, I'll show the I'll show uh, in the debug how you can see that. So basically uh, what I am doing is I am printing the binary presentation of this uh, this expression. So if you see that it will be so it is like shifting. 1 by 8 times so and what I'm doing is I'm doing an and of this so since my initially uh, my check is 0 so if I do uh, 0 and uh, the number which is generated that is this number so it will be 0 so if I do 0 so this uh, and if I do the end of these two so it will be 0 because uh, end can only be 1 because if both of these numbers contain 1 at same bit so it will be not true so it will be less than 0 which is equal to 0 so uh, this condition will be not true so I'll move ahead so next um, now i am setting the uh, eighth bit of my integer so after doing this i can like basically check the my check the value of uh, basically my check variable and uh, see the what is the binary representation of this so now if i run this so you will get uh, you will see that uh, now now check is no more zero it uh, it has the eighth bit set as one so i'll run this and show it to you so see so this is like uh, okay let me press enter and then show you again so if i run it again so this is like uh, now i have set the eighth bit in my check to one so uh, if again i encounter i at that moment my this end condition will become true and i'll return false so let's move ahead and uh, check so now my uh, basically i'll be f f calculating the integer uh, variable for l so let's move ahead and basically now i'm doing if that l bit is already set or not so l is my at 11 position so uh, so 11th bit is not set in my integer so it will not be true moving ahead so now my 11th bit also set so let's try see uh, what is the uh, binary representation of my so uh, to find the binary representation of an integer i am doing integer dot binary string in java so i'll run it again and see so you do so now this is my check so it has 8th bit true and it has 11th bit is set so next time if i have i or l then my function will basically fall in this i uh, if condition and then it will turn false so again what i am doing is I, I have o so what is o o so o is at basically 14th so 14 bit is not set in my uh, check variable so it will return uh, it, it will not be greater than zero so i'll just move ahead and basically this time i'll be setting the 14 bit in my integer variable so let's see again what is my the value of this uh, binary representation of my check so it will have 14 bit as true 8 bit has true and 11 bit has true because I have I, L and O. So at this time I know that I my string has I, L and O. So let's move ahead. So this time I will be having V and V what is a V? So V is basically at 21 position. So 20, since 20, 25th first uh, bit is not set in my check variable this time also the if condition will not be true. So it will uh, just uh, move ahead and now I will be setting the 21st bit in my check. So moving ahead I will once more show you the value of this binary representation of t check so this time like i have the 21st bit as true 14th 11th and 8th so these are the four 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 bit which are set in my uh, uh, check variable and these represents that i in my string i have i i i have l i have o i have v so let next moving ahead with e so e what what will be the e uh, e, e will be four so fourth bit is not set so this condition will not be true and likewise i will be setting the fourth bit in my check variable now moving ahead i will be c it will be c so what is the value of c it will be two and then second bit is not set so again this condition will be not true and i will be setting the uh, second bit also in my integer now uh, basically since i will be having o so o is already present so let's first see the value of my uh, basically check 
so it should have like it it has this uh, second bit and uh, fourth bit and then likewise all the bits which which represents to the character so i l o v e and c so these are all the bit which are set in my check variable so basically next moving ahead so i have what is what, what uh, i am at o so what is the value of o it is 14 so i know that 14 is already set in my uh, uh, basically my check variable so let's see what is the value of this uh, what i am doing is i am shifting 1 by 14 so left shifting by 1 by 14 so uh, what number this will generate so let's print this so it will be generating this so this is like for uh, uh, left shifting 1 by 14 and and i know my check is this so let's let me show you this so if i so this like you can see that this is the 14 bit in my check and this is the 14 bit in my number i generated using the one left shift left shift cal to end so if i do end of these two numbers it will be greater than one because uh, i have a common place where both of these numbers contain one so this end will return greater than zero so this time at this point my if if condition will be true and then i will i will be inside so i will return false and likewise my program will print false that and this string contains a duplicate character so this is how like my program works and i and i be able to find uh, if my string contain unique character or not without using any additional uh, basically additional data structure so let's run this program for another string which does not contain any duplicate characters so let's run this program for u block now i'll not uh, debug it i'll just run it and show you the output so it will return true because I am my this my string does not contain any duplicate characters. So I hope this is clear to you now. The program is in front of you. You can just copy. You can just uh, rewrite the program from here. And basically, you should be able to know like why I am doing this left shift operation here, and why I am doing this or operation here, why I am doing this end operation here, and how does this program turns to, basically deals with binary presentation. So I was able to. So you can uh, to debug. You can use this uh, basically my this script uh, this. Uh, println commands which I use to explain you why I'm using using this bitwise operation and how it is able to help me so I hope now this is clear to you so we'll meet in the next tutorial so I'll again be discussing a question from string and array so few of my tutorials will now be focused on strings and array and then we'll gradually move to other data structures thank you